In 2019, Robert Kubica is back in F1 after nine long years away, after a terrifying rally crash put his career on hold, missing a key part of his career. But what if Robert Kubica never had that rally accident? The only way to find out is in this video. Before we get into the what-if scenario, first let me go through what actually happened. So in 2011, Robert Kubica had a very bad rally accident, which put him out of action for the 2011 season and severely damaged his own body. And it took him till 2017 to step back into a Formula 1 car where he tested a Renault. Then for 2018, he became Williams' test and reserve driver and for 2019, he will be their race driver in a remarkable return to the sport. But again, what if Kubica never had that crash? Well, let's get into the scenario now. In 2011, Robert Kubica was scheduled to drive for Renault. And without that crash, that's where he would have drove. But 2011 would be his final year at Renault as for 2012, he would go to Ferrari. As Kubica has now come out and said that he did have a contract for Ferrari for 2012. And I think it would have happened because Alonso and Kubica back then and still to this day are very good friends. And Alonso would have welcomed him into the team with open arms. But how would he have done at Ferrari? Well, in my opinion, he wouldn't have done that well. He would have done better than the person he was going to replace Felipe Massa, but he wouldn't have done well because the car was not good enough. And he definitely would not have contended for the World Championship because he is not as good as Fernando Alonso but again would have done a lot better than Felipe Massa did. But because the Ferrari car in 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015 and 2016 was not good enough to win a title, at the end of 2016 I think Kubica would have left Ferrari. Because I don't think his situation at Ferrari would have really improved. And his good friend Fernando Alonso would have left the team in 2014. So for Kubica there would be no real reason to stay. But where would he go? Well, because Nico Rosberg retired at the end of 2016, Robert Kubica would replace him at the Silver Arrows, as he would be a great choice to replace him. And you could argue that Robert, before his rally crash, was better than Rosberg, so it could have been seen as an improvement. And to this day, he would still be at Mercedes alongside Lewis Hamilton, and would definitely be performing better than Valtteri Bottas in that car but still wouldn't be able to go for the championship because he's not as good as Lewis Hamilton. But what would have been the butterfly effect around Kubica not having his rally crash? Let's now get into that. First off, Nick Heidfeld would not drive for Renault in 2011, as he only drove for the team to replace Kubica, and thus would have stayed out of F1. After being replaced by Kubica at Ferrari, Felipe Massa would go to Williams in 2012, two years before he did in our timeline, to replace good friend Rubens Barrichello at that team. And that would mean fellow Brazilian Bruno Senna would not have a seat for 2012, and he also would never get back into F1. Because Pastor Maldonado would be at Williams for 2012 and 2013, Valtteri Bottas' debut season wouldn't be until 2014 alongside Felipe Massa like he was in our timeline. But with Kubica going to Mercedes in 2017, Bottas would have to stay at Williams, but would be leaving for 2019. In my opinion, after leaving Lotus, Kimi Raikkonen would not go back to Ferrari. He would instead go to McLaren for 2014, and stay at the team until the end of 2016, and then replace Kubica at Ferrari, as Kimi would have been fed up with the McLaren Honda disaster. And because of Kimi being at McLaren, that would leave no place for Kevin Magnussen. As the lineup at McLaren in 2014 would be Jensen Button and Kimi Raikkonen. And then in 2015, it would be Alonso and Kimi Raikkonen. So Magnussen would leave the McLaren driver program and go to the Renault driver program and drive for the Renault Works team in 2016. In 2014 and 2015, though, he would have to spend his time in GP2. As that would be the only place for him. And because Alonso would step into the McLaren in 2015 and Kimi Raikkonen would be at McLaren also for that season, Jensen Button in this alternate timeline would retire at the end of 2014, as he wouldn't be able to secure a drive anywhere else and McLaren would not want him. So his retirement would have came two years earlier than it did in our timeline. But that is it for this what-if scenario. 
Make sure to comment down below what you thought of this scenario and what you think would happen in this scenario. And also comment down below if you have any what if scenarios you want to see me do in a video. As again this one has been suggested by you guys in the comments. And to be fair with this scenario there's not that much different from right now. There would definitely be differences for sure but it would not be exactly world breaking. Kind of like the last what if, what if Fernando Alonso went to Red Bull in 2009. But I guarantee you Robert Kubica would have a lot more race wins than one and a lot more pole positions than one. And would be looked upon as a much better driver than he is now. But when it comes to Robert Kubica's return to the sport in 2019, as long as we see glimpses of the old Robert Kubica, that's enough for me. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back tomorrow with the live podcast, A Christmas Special. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description, also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and what did you think of this what if scenario. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.